I ran away from the Nazis when I was 14 and a half years old. And I lost my parents and most of my families during, during the Holocaust. And it's very important for us to teach young people the future. It so doesn't repeat itself. People have to really know and learn about it, especially young people, because uh, it'd be a crime to forget about it. Building a permanent home for the Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust is the culmination of a probably decades-long dream. We're looking forward to the museum playing a much more significant role in the cultural life of Los Angeles once the building is complete. How can we not? Our location in the park will make it inevitable that we'll attract visitors who weren't necessarily expecting to learn about history on a particular afternoon, but they'll come by and they'll learn about it. We're going to be able to bring more students to this building than we're able to bring to our temporary home right now. We're looking to use interactive technology, the internet, digital databases to capture things and yet present them digitally in ways that we don't have the power to do right now when we're relying exclusively on the physical objects themselves. Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust is one of the oldest Holocaust museums in the world, actually. It was founded almost 50 years ago here in Los Angeles by Holocaust survivors. It's a wonderful teaching and memorializing institution. It has an extraordinary collection, and one of the great things about this new building is that we'll be finally able to, to display our collection of artifacts and materials related to the Holocaust. It feels so wonderful. I forget from all these sad things that we are going to have a museum and this will never be forgotten. After amazing amount of uh, hard work and pleading, we've got this, this very exciting place and uh, within six months or a year it's going to be operational and hopefully we'll be there for a hundred years. Thank you so much for coming. What I want to do is welcome you to the museum construction site. And it's very exciting for me to give you an opportunity to see what you have been working on for five, 10, 15 years. What has been a dream is now becoming a reality. And uh, better to show you through than me is Hagi Belsberg, the architect, of course, who has designed it. The whole museum is about an experience about teaching and about experience through teaching. And there's not really one way to enter the museum. The museum really accepts pedestrians and patrons from both sides of the park. Our museum is a teaching museum, teaching the children and the future generation. They should know for the future what happened, why did it happen, and should never happen again. As we are coming down, the roof is twisting down and getting deep, shallower and shallower, darker and darker. Wow. The natural light that comes through here is diminishing and diminishing as we go through the different rooms, as we go through the timeline. Besides being chairman of the board and helping to, uh, to work with our staff and supervise the uh, construction and raise money, I've also decided to become very involved in curating the inside of the museum. Uh, the idea is that people, that, that students especially, can come into our museum not really knowing much about anything that happened in the Holocaust, and they will see the facts presented in a, uh, in a careful uh, way that they can access. You can see the size of these rooms get larger and larger because the stories that we're trying to tell, they are so individual. At first, everyone experiences Kristallnacht together as a community. But as we leave this room, everyone has very specific individual stories. And they are so rich, and they are so complex, so the rooms get much bigger in order to tell more of the story. The museum is being built on public land in a city park. And that was really important to the people who planned this out from the very beginning because the idea was that it should be a free museum open to all the residents of the city and county of Los Angeles. And what better place to put it than in a public park? They come to the park and then they see something and they want to know what it is. Because in a park, sometimes people don't come there intentionally for a museum, but when they see something, they want to see what it is. What happens when you come to the park? Uh, you exercise, you play, you relax, you picnic with your family or friends. 
and then you leave refreshed. You have recreated yourself. That's what recreation is about. You come into a museum that has a very dark history, and what happens when you emerge from it? You are recreated. You take the, the knowledge of the tragedy, and you have an opportunity to view your life in a new way. It's not just sorrow. There's a charge that comes out of it, an obligation to be better in our daily life. That's a recreation. We are so lucky to have an architect like Hagi Belsberg and his entire crew working on this project. Uh, people who know our museum maybe don't know quite how committed they are to this project, but they are working day and night and are, uh, are doing just everything possible to make this the most unbelievable building. We have an extraordinary team with Mark Rothman and, and uh, Randy Schoenberg and Jonah Goldrich and not to mention uh, Winter Schramm, the construction company. It, it, it's really a group effort to get this monumental piece together and, and built. I can't tell you how powerful it is to walk through the building and think about the souls of the six million that this building commemorates being bound up in every joint, every rebar, every little piece of cement that is part of this building. This museum will be a terrific exhibit and we will be showing things about the Holocaust and uh, things about how to prevent the future of another rep repetition of that. It's going to be a real eye-opener. I think the, the architecture of the museum and the way we're designing it is going to be extremely effective, unlike anything that people have ever really experienced before. When the museum started, all the wonderful people who planned it and worked and uh, gave of themselves most of them are gone, and they were really wonderful people. And I think they would be very touched and gloriously happy that this has finally gone up here. It's a miracle, and it's the most happiest moment for me, even to sit now and see the start from the museum. Bringing the museum to its creation, to its, to its almost completion, is not just a dream come true for the community that's, that's been helping it put together, but, but really a, a true gift for the city of Los Angeles. I have been dreaming about it for many, many years. I never thought that it will happen in my lifetime, but it did. And so I feel terrific.